because when you're self-hosted, you own everything. You own the content, you own the structure of your site. If you're on anybody's platform, you can only move over so much content. You can't move over your entire site. And it's really important because you have to follow their terms of use. Even though WordPress.com is great, you are following their rules. It's just like any other platform, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. And then the, probably as far as expandability, if you really want to make your blog something more than a basic blog, and maybe you'll turn into a website, that's where another critical part is because you'll have so much more room to add plugins, the themes, everything you're going to be able to build it out to be a more dynamic site where you may have more limitations on WordPress.com. Top plugins for beginners would be the standard ones, Akismet, it's catch a spam. It's great. People don't often activate it. Uh, WP Super Cache is another one. If you find your site loading real slow, it may improve it, so you might want to try that. Uh, any, if your theme doesn't have search engine optimization ability, you know, that you can go in and customize that. All-in-one SEO or SEO by Yoast is a couple other really good ones. And one couple, a couple that you don't really, you install, they kind of do the work for you. Google XML sitemap. You set it up once, it ranks your pages and indexes them on the search engine. So it's really critical to have that one on there. And then, as far as some of the advanced ones, boy, there's so many. You know how many plugins there are, <laughs> but it, but there are there's a lot of plugins. And you know, if you want it for like, a lot of them are better for the premium ones that you actually purchase, like Backup Buddy. It's so incredible that people back up their entire sites and do it regularly before they update and all that. So Backup Buddy, another premium one I use a lot, Gravity Forms. You want a really dynamic form plugin. Don't be afraid to go in there and push buttons. Hit things, move things around, do things, because you're not gonna break it. And the only way you're going to know is to actually get in there and you know open up and start a blog post and see what all those little buttons do. Push them and you know you can always you don't have to save anything. So I think it's it's important to get in there and not be intimidated. And also it's important to uh, find somebody that can, you know, find a resource that is easy for you to learn, whether it's videos, whether it's somebody hiring somebody one-on-one, -on -one, whatever. Find somebody to get you started, unless you're really, especially if you're kind of technophobia and you're freaking out and saying, oh, you know, am I gonna break anything? It's important to get somebody to get you started to a point where you're comfortable and then you can run with it. Because a lot of people want to set it up, but they don't want to set it up, they just want to start producing content. So you can do something pretty basic because you can always build it out. It doesn't have to be perfect when you go live, neither do your posts, just like everybody else says. You know, you just, just go for it. Get something up there, ask around, you know, make sure that people, what's really critical when you get going, make sure that people can share posts, share your posts, that's important. Make for sure people can sign up for your RSS feed and make sure that it's easy to navigate around. You know, it's easy for people to find the content they're looking for. And that really is the first steps to get it going, and then you can start producing the content. So if you're just like totally freaked out, and everything I said is like, my God, I'm still freaked out. You, I, I think it is finding somebody that can help you. Really it is, because you'll spend more time spinning your wheels, and you've got to, again, kind of look at how you learn. You know, there's, there's sites out there. I mean, my site, I have a lot of tutorials on it. WP Beginner. That's another one that has a lot of tutorials, free tutorials. Uh, there's good books out there, WordPress for Dummies, even though you don't, don't want to really think of yourself as a dummy, you know, it is a great book. There's, it, it really depends on your learning style, I think, and what you're comfortable with, because some people can watch videos and it just goes in one ear and out the other. You know, they don't pull it in, they need to read a book. So I, I think really find that resource, ask around, and don't just Google it because you'll be overwhelmed. You know, really look for good resources and ask. People, especially if you know somebody that's already doing it, ask them, how did you start? You know, who did you, where did you go? Where did you get the good information? Because you'd be surprised how many hidden gems there are out there. So.